Joining me now from the Biden campaign is communications director Michael Tyler. Michael, thank you so much. I know we called you this morning and asked you to talk about this. I appreciate you take, taking the time. I, I wanted to just start. I mean, your statement from the campaign makes that very clear. It wasn't in your name, but the statement from the campaign makes very clear what the campaign was thinking. But when you heard the full context, when you saw those comments at that rally, what did you hear? Well, thank you, Jen, for having me. I mean, what I heard was a continuation of the same rhetoric, the same endorsement of political violence that we've seen from Donald Trump for years, as you pointed out. It goes even farther back, right? This is the same guy who, after Nazis marched on Charlottesville and killed a woman, said there were very fine people on both sides. This is the same guy who, in 2020, told the Proud Boys, a white supremacist group, to stand back and stand by. And now, every single day on the stump, he is championing and praising the insurrectionists uh, who he encouraged to violently storm the Capitol in an attempt to overthrow our democracy. Uh, so it's not simply one comment. This is exactly Exactly who Donald Trump is, and this is exactly the threat that he poses to our democracy every single day. I think the problem for Trump, though, is that the American people saw what happened on January 6th, and they've responded consistently since, right? We, they responded in 2022, when Democrats had the most successful midterm cycle uh, for a Democratic incumbent since FDR. They continued to respond last year in states like Kentucky, Ohio, and Virginia in the fall elections then, and they're continuing to respond right now. That's why we're on our front foot heading into this general election, because the American people fundamentally understand, A, what Joe Biden has done to fight on behalf of the American people over the course of the last three years, but they see every single day now uh, the threat that Donald Trump poses if he's able to regain power. He is talking every single day about tearing down the fabric of our democracy and enacting political revenge if he's able to serve on a dictator on day one, as he is promising to do. I mean, the American people are smart, to your point. They've been watching him use this rhetoric consistently for months and years. You know, the Trump's team claim, which clearly I don't buy into, but I do want to ask you about, is that this is all in the context of a riff about the auto industry, which doesn't even entirely make sense, let me just say. But I think that I, I wanted to ask you about that and just what your thoughts are on that and their claim. Yeah, I think the claim is nonsense, again, because this is a guy who every single day is talking about enacting political revenge, who every single day is praising political violence that we saw in 2020. So the idea that they're going to be able to spin their way out of this uh, today is ridiculous, because every single day uh, Donald Trump is promoting and endorsing and encouraging political violence on the stump. Uh, it's dangerous, uh, but it is unpopular, and the American people continue to reject it. And so we're confident that we continue to contrast uh, the violence, the danger, the chaos, the division that Donald Trump is preaching every single day on the stump against uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's positive vision uh, for bringing Americans together in, in pursuit of progress. Uh, we're going to be successful, and the American people are going to continue to reject it. It's dangerous, but we have confidence uh, in the decency uh, of the American people to reject the extremism that we see from Donald Trump. I'll also note the same people saying this is out of context have not condemned the other dozens of times he has made comments that prompt political violence and our political, politically violent rhetoric. Let me ask you, the president has been very vocal, forceful. I know he's the been, right he's wing... He's been doing it for years. <laughs> I know, it's true. The president's been forceful out there. I mean, so forceful, the right wing's theory now is that he's on drugs, which is hilarious and crazy. But that aside, he's been very forceful in calling out and condemning Trump's language in recent weeks. He has been for years, but he's really upped it. Should we expect to hear him address this specifically out on the trail? I know he has a West Coast swing later this week. Well, yeah, I think you actually heard the, the president say it, even in the, going back to the State of the Union, right, before Trump's latest comments. He said that political violence uh, should be never acceptable in the United States of America. And so he's going to continue to do that. We've been carrying the same message forward since the State of the Union with an aggressive schedule. Uh, the president was in Pennsylvania. He was in Georgia, uh, Wisconsin, and Michigan last week. He's headed out west to Nevada and Arizona uh, this coming week, where he's going to continue to contrast these two fundamentally different visions for where we want to take this country. Uh, the president himself is talking about continuing to build on his historic record of accomplishment from 15 million jobs, 800,000 manufacturing jobs, lowering costs and delivering for the American people, and contrasting that against the chaos, the division, the violence endorsed by Donald Trump that he's promising uh, to bring back to America if he's able to regain power. So that's going to be the contrast that the president continues to talk about on the stump and that we'll continue to provide to the American people uh, from now until November.
Sounds like we may hear more from him on this no question. Let me ask you, Michael, about, I mean, former Vice President Mike Pence, former President Trump's vice president, everyone knows this, but it's worth repeating, announced he would not be endorsing Donald Trump. Uh, just today, he said Donald Trump calling January 6th insurrectionist hostages is unacceptable. What is the campaign doing to use comments like those to your advantage? Well, yeah, I think it's important to point out that Mike Pence's comments uh, are simply the latest in a litany of the people who knew Donald Trump closest when he was in power in the Oval Office. Uh, so whether it's Mike Pence or Bill Barr or John Kelly, these are the people who worked with him every single day and know that he does not have the temperament, know that he does not have the judgment, know that he does not have the values to ever step foot in the Oval Office ever again. And I think it also speaks to the continued uh, problem that Donald Trump has, uh, given his inability ability to expand his appeal beyond the hardcore MAGA base. Uh, you look at Nikki Haley voters, for example, uh, in states like Georgia or North Carolina or Virginia or Michigan, where Donald Trump continues to uh, demonstrate an inability to go beyond the ceiling, right? He continues to struggle in key suburban counties that are going to be crucial towards the pathway to 270 electoral votes. So our message as a campaign is that if you share the same concerns uh, that these people do, who understand the threat he poses to our democracy, who understands the threat he poses uh, to progress, that there's a home for, for all of you in Joe Biden's campaign. So we're encouraging folks to go to JoeBiden.com, sign up, join our efforts, because it's going to take all of us to defeat Donald Trump once again in November. Always a good plug there on the website, Michael Tyler. I know you and everybody's working so hard. Thank you so much for calling all of this out uh, this morning. Really appreciate your time.